So hello everybody, how are you today? My name is Ruth Pasola from Curva.com and I have the biggest headache ever and I don't know why. Anyhow, it might be related to something that happened to me recently and I was talking with to Gil Raviv. If you don't know he, who he is, he's actually, he was leading the Power Query team in Excel a while back. And he runs his own blog, it's called Data Chant, you've probably seen it. And uh, I was telling him about it and he said, how about you share it on your blog? It was something, something very weird, but I managed to create the worst Power BI model ever. And you can read the experience in here, I recommend you that you read it before you continue watching this video. And you try to guess what seven mistakes I made while creating the Power BI file that you see on the blog post. And make sure that you let us know on the comment box of the blog post or of the video which ones you think that are the big mistakes, okay? So into this video, I'm actually going to reveal what I did wrong and what could be done to make it right. So you don't kill your Power BI models too. Let me kill them so you don't have to. How about that? Okay, so how about we get started? Okay, so here we're in Power BI. This is the model that I use. And before we get into this, let's go here. Edit queries. The first thing I wanted to do was to actually get data from different sources. So I wanted to have uh, products and categories and sales and all that stuff. And instead of creating a model, I merged them in Power Query. So I created a huge data table. And I've already talked in another video why that is a big practice, why that is a bad practice. I will link that below, but basically it just makes it very hard for Power BI to compress the data and also to filter it because it has to filter sometimes depending on how you write your tax measures, all the columns, okay? So that is the first bad, bad practice to merge all the tables into one. The next thing I went about doing it was actually to change all the id columns from let me show you because this is the table that it gets imported so all the id columns i changed them from number to text and that is also a bad practice let me tell you why Power BI compresses numbers better than text. So the reason why I wanted to do it was correct. I didn't want them to summarize, but how often do you use IDs on your calculations on a visual? Not very often. And if you do want to use them, there is another way to do it. You can just go here, get the category ID, and then go to modeling and then put down summarize and then you will avoid it, but you will still leave the column as a number so Power BI can compress it correctly. So that's one way to do it. Okay, now the next one is not so easy to see. I couldn't serve them all of you in a platter, right? Something you would have to look for. And this was the one, okay. So what was wrong? It was not very easy to see. You can see it actually on Gil's post. Here, if you look, you see that Fright and all other decimal columns, they have a lot of decimals and this is not needed. And again, this is a compression question. So if you have a lot of decimals, the number of distinct or unique uh, items will increase making harder to compress and harder to search so if you don't need the decimals that many decimals or decimals are all remove them right put the whole number and then power bi will work much much faster okay now the next one Mistake number four is that there are too 
many columns. If you look in the Power BI file, you will see that I use country, ca uh, category, product name, you don't see it here because there's a mistake, and then week and year month, that's it. And how many columns do you have here? So import the columns that you need and nothing more. Because everything that is in there has to get compressed and in memory and filter. And the more you have, the slower it gets. Easy, right? So import only what you need. It's easier to import again new columns than to remove them, especially if you give them to users. Next one. You see here that there is an error, right? Well, the reason there's an error is because of these. You know, Power BI detects the relationship for me and created by the rational relationships because there were unique values in both. But there are two scenes in this one. <coughs> I even I can't one. There are two. Number one, avoid using bidirectional relationships as much as you can. In this case, it is just two tables, so it should have been okay. But because it is a calendar, then you are running into extra trouble, especially with time intelligence. And this is the reason why you get this here, you see? This is telling you, you have directional relationship on, get rid of it, please, because you'll see here. And I have a video on that. I'll post it down below so you can see the details of it. Single? There you have it. And now we're back on track. So you see, bidirectional relationships are not easy to work with. Okay, now, mistake number six. <laughs> mistake number six. This one I think you should probably, you have probably seen, and it is creating calculated columns when you should have created a measure. So you can see here they are created as a column. You can see it here also on the symbol. So even though there are two columns that needs to be multiplied, you can use some x to multiply them instead of using calculated columns. Why don't use calculated columns? I have a video down below, but also calculated columns will take memory because they get stored. And measures they just get evaluated when needed, right? So they're much better. Okay, tip number seven. My Axis disappearing. <laughs> okay. So, mistake number seven. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you catch that. That was not very easy. And you can see it. You, you can see it here too, but it's more obvious here. So, if we go in here, you'll see that I write previous year uh, isolate instead of accumulated. And it says calculate sum of order sales. I am using implicit measures instead of explicit measures. And I have a video down below too, so you can go and check it out. But implicit measures, it means that you haven't wrapped a, cal a column into a measure. So you're using it directly. And if you change the name of that column, it's going to break everything. So if I would change sales by sales two, then this one will break, this one will break, and all other ones. If you just wrap it on a measure, only that one will break and it's easier to fix, basically. So those were my seven scenes. Did you find them all? Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank you, Gil, for allowing me to do this. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. I had a, a, quite a bit of fun doing it. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I will see you again tomorrow with another Power Nay, another Dax Fridays video. So until then, happy Halloween and take care. Bye bye. My head is killing me. Ah, ah. <laughs> bye.